Hey guys, what's up? Happy Friday. You know what time it is. It's Functional Friday. That's it. Once again, it is time for another installment of Functional Friday. And today, we are going to be going over the last piece of the trigger assembly, which is the trigger housing. So, come on in. Alright, so we've already gone over the trigger bar and the connector um, and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna kind of look at housings and uh, see how they factor into the whole thing I don't know if I have any of these jigs set up I'll have to set one up quickly well let's put it this way you, you guys understand what this is doing um, if I throw one of these together real quickly just to make just for educational purposes make a little bit more sense to you go drop this in the, so this is the trigger housing this some people call it the trigger block there's all kind of names for it but it sits in here and grab a trigger pin just like that so all it's doing is housing the spring it's housing the um, trigger bar and the connector so it ties all these parts together and basically it's designed just as the I don't know if I'd call it the interface but the mechanism that holds this whole thing together it's part of the assembly now you see it in relation so basically that's that it is one of the parts is called the ejector now depending on what caliber the gun is um, the ejector will vary so we have a variety of different ejectors here that Glock uses depending on the calibers. You have, these are for the 40 caliber Gen 4s. These are for the 40 caliber Gen 3s. These are for um, the Glock 42s and 43s. These are 9 millimeters, which you can see, like, they don't sell these separately. We have tons of them to do whatever we need to do. Um, you know, I think since the Poly 80 thing has come out, there's a been a lot more talk about ejectors and what which ones work better like I get very bizarre um, uh, requests to have a gen 5 ejector put into a gen 3 housing for a um, poly 80 now that might work specifically I don't think in general it's one of those things that's uh you know that you did you that's necessary you know what I mean like if you have a because what you have to remember is this ejector is it's designed to do a certain thing you're wanting to see you're wanting to see the casing come out, you know, kind of at a 45 degree angle, kind of away from you. You don't want it to come back and smack you in the face, which, you know, the early Gen 4s were kind of doing that. It was like, you know, the, you were getting the casing at your face. So they kind of changed it, um, changed the angle of the ejector. Uh, with the Gen 5s, when they first came out, they didn't know if they were going to keep the one that's stock for the Gen 4, which is 30274, or this other one, which they have decided to... They have decided to see because they're still mixed up. They've decided to settle on this one right now, even though they're not selling parts. It's the 47021 ejector. So it's just slightly different than this one, but the engineers, as you can see, there, there's just slight differences. But the engineers at Glock have found that the 47021 works better for the Gen 5s. Um, but like I said, the, they both work. It just, they both work. I, I, I don't know this specifically. And, and that's another thing. Whenever you have a question about stuff, just call Glock. I called them today for like something technical. I mean, I knew what I wanted. I knew what the answer was, but I just wanted to have it confirmed out of a, a, someone's mouth there at Glock because then you know it's a gospel and then, and then you can be okay saying it to someone else because you've, you know, confirmed it with, uh, got your papal blessing from those guys but anyway back to the housing so the housing is contained within the frame in the rear here with the trigger housing pin um, you know what it's not it's not one of those parts that it's 
I don't want to say very exciting. It doesn't like, like it's exciting. To, it's exciting to me all the modifications you can do. It just doesn't get any press. You understand? Not many people talk about what you can or what you can't do with the housings. Um, you know, functionally, this is what it does. It houses all these parts and it and it and it and it, and it you know ties them all together so the gun fires. Uh, so some of the things you need to think. Some of the things that are part of the consideration of the housing is the fact that. You know, within this closed window, it's a closed system, so you can only work within. Let's take a stock housing. Let's let back this up. That's your area. That's what you're working with. Okay. So there's areas to. There's ways to fill this in to cut down pre-travel. Some of my other videos show that. There's ways to to, uh, you know, like you just saw with that set screw to put a stop in here. So once the trigger bar breaks, the shot stops. Because typically with the Glock, once that shot breaks, if you don't have this stop in there, it is going to go all the way almost to the back of the frame to the to the gun. Um, I guess I probably should have stock guns around for this. But basically, if you don't have that, if you don't have the housing, if you don't have a housing stop, you get what's called the over travel jump. So trigger breaks and then it moves backwards to where either the trigger hits one of two things depending on what connector you're using it will either stop dead on this actually that's where that's basically most of the time where it stops dead you don't see them usually smack in the back of the frame unless the unless the uh unless it's off but that's right there where the gun where it stops and there's another area right here if the gun's out of spec a little bit you'll see that area that's right there the back of the trigger guard is going to stop it but you know this is all this is all timed so basically this and this are hitting the same spot at the same time to stop it now if this was my trigger in here like you've seen the trigger would break about right the trigger would break say if we use this i always use this little dot as a as a reference say the trigger would break right there and it would not go any further whereas with this with without the stop in there it goes further now there is still a stop in here so it's not really true to how far back it would break back this out a little bit more so if this was if this was a trigger i built in here it would probably break about right there and then so you have all that room which there with this fulcrum translates to a much more travel than you actually want in the gun it's just not efficient there's no need for it plus you know you're going to have a little bit of sight jump and um, if, if it's if it's an unnecessary movement if it's a, if it's not efficient then it's then why keep it you know same thing with a lot of the slop in the front of the guns you know what I mean like why keep all that pre travel if you can safely if you can safely remove it and you know what you're doing and you know the system let me pull this out real quick then why not remove it um, and but that is limited you have to remember like I showed you I'm gonna I'm gonna back this out whole way to, to stock configuration so if no matter what you're doing with this you have to remember within the limitations of certain things check it out quick so this is only going to go so far forward you know you can only bring that so far forward as you can see in that window it's stopping that window is what's stopping at the, the, the right there nothing else is really stopping that trigger from going forward except that because you can see there's still room to move there in that little space so that's what is stopping it you are bound to this window backward and forward now as you can see i don't know if you can see the light in there you're not you're not nearly to the yeah yeah you can see that that's see the trigger bar the the uh perpendicular bars of the cruciform right there they're stopping well before the actual back of that window and that's why we use the trigger stop is this one of my guns okay perfect that's why we use this right here and as i spin this in you can see it's actually pushing the bar forward so we change that that's pretty good can you can you hit mm -hmm. one more closer see if it's all right yeah right there so now when the trigger breaks, it's going to stop on that part right there and backing it out. That's kind of, that's kind of the functioning of, uh, that I use for my triggers. And, you know, some, some imprint, you know, like tap into the, into the shoe in the back there. 
I do that too. Um, you know, but for the most part, I've found this to be the most consistent way, especially the way I taper tap it. That way you leave the last few threads untouched. And so it just really cinches down, you know, on metal, you don't want to do that. But on polymer, it's, it really just holds those guys have my triggers. You know, you got to really got to crank it. It's just not going to turn, which is, uh, you know, always, uh, you don't want things to start moving on you anyway. So that is a consideration that window right there is a big consideration um if you didn't have this top part to the window because these trigger the way this the, the way the trigger is designed it's always trying to pull itself up you can see that it's always trying to pull itself up if i was to cut this away this would just keep this would just keep pulling itself up in the air well as far as it could before it actually hit the connector so you can see all this is this is it's riding on that right there all this is working in unison it's riding on the top of that window so you know sometimes guys try to you know take material off certain areas when you know simply you could add material to this to you know to hold it down a little bit more that's just a you know i'm just i'm snowballing man spitballing whatever i'm throwing some stuff out there so that's that's a very important part of it um i showed you on the last video with the connectors how you can actually shave away some of this part to get it to you can do it forward too. shave some of this away to get the connector to bend uh you know uh, forward to backward a little bit in this space as opposed to how we talked about medial to lateral so that's another aspect of this that can you know that, that you kind of modify um moving forward you know you have a couple different spring options you have a five pound spring which is the stock spring a lot of people like to use these six pound springs but what a lot of people don't realize is that these springs help pull the trigger back so if I'm loading this spring this way, it's going to help me if this spring is being loaded this way, if it comes together, it's helping. It's helping me pull the trigger back, which means when you're using it, when it goes the opposite way for reset, if this is heavier, it's gonna be harder to reset the trigger. So basically that is a consideration. A lot of guys like to mix these six pound springs with the four pound striker spring and the differential is just a little bit too much. So you get a very neutral or slow reset. And that's also why, and I loaded one of these up too. There's the, um, you know, the New York spring. This is one of the New York springs. This is the olive. There's an orange one too. But when this drops in, sorry, get this backwards. When this drops in, and then this clicks in on top of it. That's why this is harder to pull back because you don't have any counter pull whatsoever. You have nothing helping you pull it back. In fact, you have something that's kind of like holding it up in the air a little bit there and like obstructing it, right? Just a little bit of obstruction you'll feel right there. But, you know, this is for the, the revolver shooters. Like when Glocks, when the New York City Police Force uh, switched over to Glocks, they wanted something that mimicked a revolver more than not. And the striker fire weapon as it was just didn't have that characteristic. So what they did is they put this in here, which basically means that the all the way forward, you have all the weight of the striker pushing against the lug pushing against the sear right there so you have all this spring weight impacting that so basically it feels very too it feels very like you know what i mean just like a, a full like a very two stage not a two stage like break it's rolling let's put it that way before i start jamming myself up with words like so the whole time it's going backwards it has no help from the spring that's trying to compress that the, the uh the compression spring there the heat so basically that's the, the thought behind this. And it actually works. Like a lot of guys like to use this with the 3.5 connector. With that, you get this really long because the 3.5 connector is giving you that longer break. Remember, you get this really long kind of almost like a, like a revolver, even like a, you know, six P, what is it? The 226, you know what I mean? That bang, you know what I mean? That, that kind of feel. So, um, you know, incidentally, I think the last statistic I read, like New York City cops whose triggers are god lawfully high, I think their first, I think their center mass percent hit, their first, their first shot center mass hit rate is maybe 
you know what I mean? And that's that just goes to show that you know maybe a heavy, heavier trigger isn't isn't the best either. You don't you know you want something that that you're comfortable with, but when you're trying to muscle through a trigger and you start incorporating the rest of your hand in there, that's when things start to go. I think they say that there are more people shot in the hip than in center mass, uh, you know, in New York City. Who knows now with all the defunding that's going on? Uh, but I won't get in. <laughs> I won't get into that. Uh, okay, so next. Um, okay, so we went through the ejectors. We went through the different spring setups. Went through modifying this. Okay, so things have changed with the Gen 5. And I figured I'd do a little explanation here on why. There's one part of this. If you guys look at all these, these are all the predecessors right here. These housings right there. This is the slim line too. There's one thing that is, is, is very different. And that is this kind of hood mechanism right here. All right. And so when they changed... When they changed the striker from the circular, um, from this little circular thing, which rested on these shelves right here, get it right. I gotta turn this stuff around. Okay, that's the trigger safety depressed. I mean, that's the trigger safety engaged, and then the vertical extension pushes it up, and then that goes through. Okay, so a lot of times there was, you know, depending on what angle the gun was, inertia, all kind of stuff, there would be instances where you just keep getting banged up in here, and you could always see that as chowdering on this shelf, this shelf right here of the connector. I'm sure, I mean, of the firing pin safety. I'm sure most of you have seen that. Also, consequently, the the extractor plays into that a little bit because you can remember the extractor is this does the spring from this captures the extractor. So there's a little bit of interplay. So when they switched it more to like a 90 degree angle instead of those shelves, I don't even know if these Gen 5 strikers are hard to come by. Do I even have one here? Okay, so here we go. So here's the head of a 43 striker because it's the same thing. I'm gonna bring that in. See the right angle? The right angle on that instead of a rounded shelf as this is, as you can see, the two differences in the mechanisms. One's this double rounded shelf, one's just a right angle. And when this comes up, of course I have no 43. I'll just open up one of these real quick. Well, how are we doing on time? Uh, 17 minutes. Oh man, this is, this is we're, we're fine. Okay, so with this mechanism, you have that little right angle there, which is detaining this like that. So they fit together. See, I can hold this with one hand. Try, try doing that with a, uh, whoop, slipped out. Try doing that with the other one. So it's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's a safe, it's a safety, it's a better safety feature. You're like wall, 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 wall. You have nothing that can slip past like this right here. You know, I can, I can't, I can't, well, I guess I can, I can hold that in there, but that's what's going on. But as you can see that and that opposed to a straight right angle, I mean, it's a no brainer guys. I mean, that is, it's just a no brainer. That's going to, that's going to hold, that's going to hold on there way better. And I know this, I'm, I'm, I'm butchering this <laughs> with the angles. So get those away. All right. So, th so I'm just explaining that. So now, if you if you take that into consideration, and then we put these together, and of course these not, not only are these clear guns, they don't have barrels, so they're not shooting anything. Um, typically, this is the pre these are this is this is a Gen three, but it's Gen three and fours um, do the exact. They're, they're all working the same way. So I'm going to fire this, and so everyone knows after you fire a Glock, you have the, the the firing pin is free. Okay, once this starts to travel back. Once it starts to travel back, you will see all the way back to there, that firing pin stays out. Okay. Now there could be an instance when it doesn't. I'm just saying that's tip. This is, this is the reason why they did this. Okay. So with the Gen 5, with that new hood, put this in the battery, trigger breaks, same thing. Firing pin is sticking out. Now look, once we get down to right about where the ejector is sticking out, this hood comes into play. You got that? Mm -hmm. So watch watch the tip of the striker. It's going, see it, it fell. 
it fell. So right here, I'm going to depress it again because you can do that with these. So right there, it's being held. Right there, the striker releases. So whereas here, it's not. It has to come all the way forward back to the vertical extension, which you can see right there. That vertical extension will then, you saw it happen right there. It starts to hit it. Once again, I'll, I'll get it up there and I'll, these ones are a little hard because I can't get my finger in there to, yeah, we'll just start it over. Okay, so trigger brakes. You can see the firing pin sticking out all the way back. Nothing happens. Now right forward, that vertical extension, as soon as it starts to depress, as soon as, yeah, yep, see it going in. That's, that's the old way of doing things. And right there, it's just, they found out over time, and that was what that chowdering was, that this would be a better because this is something that like not a lot of people notice you know what i mean like it's just like they just blow right by it but as far as the engineering of the gen 5s that is the one of the you know very 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 intelligent internal engineering things that is just you know i just think is, is super super cool that they're able to you know put this piece in so right there i'll show you underneath that's what's happening it's depressing this so the striker will the striker striker goes through right there but then when it hits this area, watch the tail drops out as soon as it hits that. So it's depressing it. And that just, I guess, I don't do the, the engineering stuff that, that, you know, the Glock does. I don't presume that I'm, everyone's like, oh, you're, I, I, but look, man, they, 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 they invented the gun. They know more than me, man. Get, like some people, they have to. Um, so, you know, I just look at this. I said, well, that's really cool. That's a really cool thing to do as far as engineering is concerned. And obviously it was, they don't do things unless, they make sense. They're Austrian, okay? Sometimes things don't make sense. Um, but anyway, let me put these back. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, and that's why with the Gen 5s, you have this back plate. Because this has to come... This piece, what well, this is, this is the Gen 5. This You need this back plate right here in the Gen 5s because of that little piece right there that hood capish and they have this part as well but we won't get into that oh, actually i don't have a back plate on there but that's basically why the back plates are different from a gen 3 to a gen 3 and 4 to a gen 5 but you can always take an exacto knife on a gen Let's see if i have any here those of you that are swapping slides out and stuff like that you know if you have a you know, I guess they had to do it for the way it's molded or something like that. Just to, but if you have this, your Gen 3, 4 backplate, all you have to do is take an X-Acto knife and just cut that out of the way. And then you'll have a Gen 5 backplate. You can see flush, flush, little, that, there's that little right angle right there. So that's why there's the difference in, in backplates in those two, in those two models. Um, okay. Lastly, I'll, I'll give you a little, little nugget. I always like to throw nuggets in there. Where are we at as far as time? Uh, 23. Okay, yeah, we're still good. So, everyone talks about wanting to remove an ungodly amount of pre-travel with these guns. And like I said, every, everything is in, you, everything is timed, everything is consequential, you know what I mean, and successive with these things. So, if you're taking, if you're taking, if you're pushing thresholds in one way, which means if you're coming further back off of this shelf, like we talk about right here, if you're, if you're coming back further off that shelf that's just your proof okay so that's stock that's that's minimizing pre-travel that's minimizing pre-travel that's that's still a decent safeness right there you know what i mean as long as you've got maybe not for a carry gun but you know i'd like to be kind of like a third i like to do the rule of thirds but for some people they really really like to imagine if you could have it sitting all the way there because all you really need for the trigger to break is to go bang right there you just need that little bit of movement actually so how are you going to achieve that so this doesn't drop down into that shelf, okay? So a lot of guys do this, we call it building up the, building up the safety shelf, but as you, this is a very, this is the actual wrong way to do it. People will, you know, use a set screw and they will come from the top down in like this. And they will usually, this is even, this is a little bit better because most guys, when they do it, they drill straight down in and it's, it's just a hack job. You know what I mean? So they don't even bother to 
change the angle. It's literally a freaking set screw just sticking up out of there. I have a couple of them somewhere. I'm not going to go digging through them. So, you know, if you're, if you're recreating something, you want to recreate, like, why wouldn't you recreate a 45 degree angle? It's beyond me. Why would you just make something sticking up like a stump? But the real way to do this is to come from here and, and, and tap your set screw all the way up through it. So at the end of the set screw right there, you can polish it sort of like the same thing that Wick here does on every single one of these set screws. We kind of make them, you know, these were dog ears. So what he does is he just takes them down so they're nice and nice and flush and smooth, puts a little round on them. Drop it on the table so okay. we can focus on it. You can see they're polished, you know what I mean? So they're that for that way when it's when it's metal to metal and this piece of this piece of metal is hitting this, as you can see, when I rub it up and when I rub it back and forth on there, it's very smooth. You know what I mean? All these little things are taken into account. So basically, you have one smooth guide, you know, edge on there that you know for a fact is not going to. If it's a dog ear, you could get a hang up. It could, there could be a burr or something like there, and that trigger can hang in there, and it's not going to want to move. It's going to be pinned down, and then that way you're not going to pick your striker back up. So basically, that's a consideration. So same process that we do to the tips of these 440s you do to a you know 348 because you can see this is how they come raw that's the difference right there you can see the see the tip did you get that in there that's the gnarl it's got a little I man it's a dog uh, you know what let's do it like this and i will stay as still as possible you can see the tip there, that's a that's a cup cup tip. So we don't want those extra ridges there. But what you do is you do the same process, you it's tedious. You have one of these on a drill and you just you know use a twenty five hundred grit or something like that and you just get it until it looks like this. So now if you're trying to build a shelf up along with this little bad boy right there, which is now I'm now I'm fine tuning from this angle as well. See what I'm doing here? See that right there? That's in the front of it. I can fine tune pre-travel with a set screw right in here. See how that's working? I'm finding tuning over travel with a set screw in there. And because I'm able to fine tune this so much, I because I'm pushing this really, really, really to the threshold, which would be kind of right at that edge, I need something that is going to hold this in place right there. Like see how it's actually, you can, you can hear it. It's holding that in place. It is not going to drop straight down there. See, it's sitting on it. You're completely off the shelf, but it is not right there. It is not going down. Now, if I go a little further, that's when it drops. So basically I can take every bit of pre-travel out of a trigger that I want, depending on what I'm trying to build with set screws and building up this shelf. Now, sometimes I'll build it up on this side. It all depends. You know, it all depends on, on what I'm doing. But you know, this is one of those, you know, get yourself, gift yourself some housings because you're gonna, you're gonna trash them. You know what I mean? This is a very, very hard drill. These are two very hard holes to drill, um, unless you do it over and over and over again. Um, and a lot of guys, a lot of times, guys just want to drill these and let the set screw tap itself. That's very, with these bigger set screws in the housings, you got a long way to go. So it's, it's kind of hard. You usually, you usually strip a, you know, one of these types of, uh, you know. Allen keys before you get through there. So it's always better to, you know, to drill it. I mean, you can even hand drill these, you know. A lot of stuff when I started, you can just get something like this and, you know, just stick it in there and, and, and uh, you know, like right here, stick that in there and just keep spinning, do a hand drill. And then there's a 256 tap right here and just tap, just get it back in there and get it in there and tap it, you know, tap it the whole way through. Just giving away some some knowledge bombs there, it's a little bit extra stuff if you guys feel like going that way. Um, okay, so I know I had a, said I had an announcement, unfortunately, <laughs> it's been postponed, so it's probably gonna be next week. Like I said, it's a doozy, it's gonna be cool. It's, 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 uh, that, that's all I'm gonna say about it. It's gonna, it's gonna be next week. I, I should have it in hand and, and, uh, ready to divulge. But, as for, oh, the last thing I didn't, I didn't go through this new clasp system, the new uh, Gen 5s. That's the main difference. So instead of using a, instead of using a torsional spring, 
I forget the name of that co there's a name for that actual helical spring you know when it's pulled apart like that maybe it's helical maybe that's it they decided to go for a compression spring so this way they load this way you know they're loading forward let me get something else to like stick in there same thing they're just loading it this way with a compression spring same difference. And this clasp sticks armors. I guess it was they chose to do that because they it was a lot easier. Everyone everyone gets the hook, you know, the spring wrapped around the hook leg here and there's problems. And if there's an Achilles heel to the Glock system, everyone used to say it was the trigger spring is the first thing that will break, especially if it's over hooked over, um, which looks like this when it's in there. It'll look like that. And that puts torque on the whole thing or because it there has that little demarcation there to hold it. But a lot of times when you're snapping it in, you just snap right over that and it looks like that. And that causes problems. And over time, it snaps that. So I guess they figured, you know what? We'll make it super easy. All you're going to do is put A into B and bam. That's the difference right there. Now, there's ways to modify these. Like I said, you know, if, if you actually lighten this, the pull is going to be heavier, but you're going to have a more aggressive reset. You know, that's the problem right now. I think what's going on with the chimney triggers this this spring right here is like just doesn't have the it doesn't have the piss and vinegar to have the trigger return you know what i mean it's just not enough to give you a nice positive return but then you know if they're advertising three pound trigger and they beef this up it's going to change those dynamics because same thing like we said every every action everything you're doing is you do one thing is changing another thing and especially in something that's as functional as this we have all these moving parts you know you have to know if i change this what is going to happen safety wise first and second am i going to be able to actually achieve what i'm trying to achieve with uh you know what, what the feel or the brake feel or the weight and all that kind of stuff there's there's tons of considerations so that is functional friday for today um the website is www.johnnyglocks.com numbers 941-376-4383 the email is johnny at johnnyglocks.com Remember, I always forget to say this, like, like, subscribe, share, and remember, trigger control is control. You guys have a good weekend. And end with the photo.